in the unit of laws of motion we had done how linear momentum of a moving particle can be used to measure its linear motion and also its importance in determination of the force. Likewise, angular momentum can be used in rotational motion. All moving objects have some sort of angular momentum, but it is used most often to describe rotating objects. Forces in certain directions can change the angular momentum of an object. Just like with linear momentum, the greater the mass of the object and the faster it is moving, the more difficult it is to slow it down or stop its motion and rotation. In the module, we studied how torque is intricately related with the moment of inertia and rate of change of angular velocity of the given system. How do we define angular momentum then? Just as the moment of a force is defined as rotational analog of force, the quantity angular momentum is defined as rotational analog of linear momentum. It can also be called moment of momentum or moment of linear momentum. We will first define angular momentum for a special case of a single particle. Like the moment of a force, angular momentum can be also defined with the help of a vector product. For a particle with a constant mass m and velocity v, linear momentum p and position vector r relative to some origin o in an inertial frame of reference, we can define angular momentum as L vector is equal to R vector cross P vector. Hence, it can be defined as a cross product of position vector and linear momentum vector. The value of R depends upon the choice of origin since it involves the particle's position vector relative to O or the origin. The SI units of angular momentum are kg meter square per second. The direction of angular momentum vector is perpendicular to the plane comprising of the position vector and linear momentum. And we can use a right hand palm rule for vector products which can be used for determining the direction of angular momentum. As we know the right hand palm rule, the first vector which is the r vector here is represented by the stretched thumb of the right hand palm, while the second vector of the cross product which is the linear momentum is represented by the stretched fingers of the right hand palm. Then the direction in which our right hand palm is facing here it is this will represent the direction of our angular momentum. The magnitude of angular momentum can be written as L is equal to R into P into sin of angle phi, where L is the magnitude of angular momentum, R is the magnitude of position vector, P is the magnitude of linear momentum of the particle and phi is the angle between position vector of the particle and its linear momentum. The magnitude of angular momentum can be also written as L is equal to d into p, where d is the perpendicular distance from the line along which the particle moves and the point O. The distance plays an important role in the torque also, is also called lever arm for the momentum vector. With the help of the, this concept of angular momentum of a particle, we can find out angular momentum of a system of particles. The total angular momentum of a system of particles about some axis can be defined as vector sum of angular momentums of the individual particles. Hence, L net vector can be written as L1 vector plus L2 vector, so on till Ln vector, where 
the vector sum is over all the n particles of the system. Angular momentum of a rigid body can be also determined in a similar manner. Angular momentum of a rigid body. Consider a rigid object rotating about a fixed axis that coincides with the z axis of a coordinate system as shown in the figure. Let us determine the angular momentum of this object. Each particle of the given object rotates in the x y plane about the z axis with an angular speed omega. The magnitude of the angular momentum of a particle of mass m i for an i th particle about the z axis can be written as l i is equal to m i into v i into r i, where r i is the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation for the i th particle. As we know, v i is equal to r i into omega which is the relation between the linear speed of the particle with the angular speed and the radius of the circular path which the particle executes. Therefore, we can express the magnitude of the angular momentum of this particle as L i is equal to m i into r i square into omega. The direction of this angular momentum for the i th particle is directed along the z axis. We can now find the angular momentum of the whole object, which in this situation has only the z component by taking the sum of angular momentums over the whole of the body, that is for all the particles. Net angular momentum can be written as summation i goes from 1 to n m i r i square into omega, which can be further reduced as omega is common for all the particles and the rest of the quantity which is summation i goes from 1 to n m i r i square is actually the moment of inertia of the object about the z axis, which can be represented as i. So, net angular momentum can be written as i times omega, where i is the moment of inertia of the object about z axis and omega is the angular speed of the given object. Now, we can find relation between angular momentum and torque. When a net force acts on a particle, its velocity and momentum change. So, its angular momentum may also change. We can show that the rate of change of angular momentum is equal to the torque of the net force acting on the given object or the system of particles. We can take time derivative of angular momentum for a given particle that is L vector which is angular momentum is equal to cross product of r and p, where r and p are the position vector of given particle and linear momentum of the given particle. Then if we differentiate the two side, we get d l by d t will be equal to d y d t of r cross p. Using product rule, we can break it further d r by d t into p plus r vector into d p by d t. The first term is 0 because it contains the vector product of the vector with itself as d r by d t is velocity and p is the momentum. The angle between the two will be 0. The second term we replace by net force as d p by d t is force. Hence, rate of change of angular momentum becomes r cross f that is cross product of force, which we know is actually torque. Let us do a problem to understand how to find angular momentum of a given system. 
Consider a projectile of mass m launched with an initial velocity v at an angle theta with horizontal as shown in the figure. Find its angular momentum just before it strikes the ground about the point of projection which is taken as origin also. As shown in the figure, a particle is projected with velocity v at an angle theta with horizontal, its speed we know will be same when it strikes the ground. Also, the angle it will make with the ground will be equal to the angle it made at that time of projection. But the vertical component of velocity will get reversed. Therefore, I can write initial velocity will be equal to v cos theta i cap plus v sin theta j cap, where v is the magnitude of the initial velocity and theta is the angle of projection. Similarly, I can write final velocity will be equal to v cos theta i cap minus v sin theta j cap. Here, the y component of velocity had been reversed but the magnitude remains the same. Now, the angular momentum of projectile considering to be of point sized about the point of projection or origin can be written as by the expression L vector is equal to R cross P, where R vector is a position vector and P is the linear momentum. We know the range of a particle in case of projectile can be written as capital R is equal to v square into sin of 2 theta upon g, where v is the magnitude of initial velocity, theta is the angle of projection. Hence, using this, the final point where the particle strikes the ground will have the position coordinates of x and y. x coordinate will be actually equal to the range, while the y coordinate will be equal to 0 the particle is at on the ground. So, r vector becomes v square sin of 2 theta upon g into i cap plus 0 j cap, while the momentum where when the particle strikes the ground will be mass of the particle into final velocity of the particle, it can be written as mass into in brackets we have v cos theta i cap minus v sin theta j cap. Now, taking the cross product of the position vector and the linear momentum, we get L vector will be equal to v square sin 2 theta upon g i cap with a cross product with m which is the mass of the particle in brackets v cos theta i cap minus v sin theta j cap. After doing the cross product, we get L vector is equal to minus v cube into sin of 2 theta into sin theta upon g into k cap. That means, the direction of the angular momentum can be observed to be along vertically downward direction. Now, by representing the vectors in i, j, k form, the direction can be obtained mathematically, but we can also use the right hand palm rule to determine the direction of angular momentum. Now, we will talk about conservation of angular momentum, which is a very important concept and used very often in daily life. Imagine what would happen if there is no external torque acting on a given system or the given system is isolated. Then net external torque which is also written as derivative of angular momentum which will be equal to 0, which can lead to net angular momentum will be equal to constant. This means there is no change in angular momentum that is the angular momentum of given system remains conserved.
but do remember the conditions under which it is valid. It is when no external torque acts on the given system. If the system is an object rotating about a fixed axis with certain angular velocity, then using conservation of angular momentum provided there is no external torque acts on it, we can write L is equal to I 1 into omega 1 which is the initial angular velocity and I 1 is the initial moment of inertia of the given system will be equal to I 2 the final moment of inertia of the system into omega 2 which is the final angular velocity of the given system. This expression is valid both for rotation about a fixed axis and for rotation about an axis through the center of mass of a moving system as long as that axis remains parallel to itself. We require only that net external torque be 0. Acrobats, skaters, divers and other sport persons make use of the principle of conservation of angular momentum to show off their spectacular feats. At the time of jumping, the diver gives himself a slight rotation by which he acquires some angular momentum as you can see in the given image. When he is in air, there is no torque acting on him. Is there any force acting on the man? Yes. Wait. Still, the torque on him is zero. We know the man is rotating about his center of gravity. Therefore, torque due to weight will be zero. Hence, his angular momentum must be conserved. If he folds his body, as you can see in figure A, to decrease his moment of inertia, his rotational speed must increase as we know angular momentum needs to be remain conserved. If he unfolds his body before entering into pool of water, then his moment of inertia increases as the distribution of mass from the axis rotation increases. He must rotate slowly as I increases, omega decreases since angular momentum remains conserved. Similarly, the angular speed of the skater increases when the skater pulls his hands and feet close to his body, thereby decreasing moment of inertia. If one neglects friction between skates and ice, no external torque acts on the skater. The change in angular speed is due to the fact that angular momentum is conserved and the product of I and omega remains constant. A decrease in moment of inertia of a skater causes an increase in the angular speed. Now let us do a problem to apply the concept of conservation of angular momentum. Suppose a girl sitting on a swivel chair, a chair which can rotate which we just saw in the case of a videos shown in figure given below is spinning at a rate of 0.8 revolutions per second with her arms extended. She has a moment of inertia here girl and chair combined of 2.34 kg meter square with her arms extended and of moment of inertia 0.363 kg meter square with her arms close to the body. Part A, what is her angular velocity in revolutions per second after she pulls in her arms? Part B, what is her rotational kinetic energy 
before and after she does this. You can see the figure where the arms of the girl are well extended. Part A, as there is no external talk on the girl, as a movement of arms happen, therefore the result change in her angular velocity will be due to the conservation of angular momentum. Let i and i dash are initial and final moment of inertia respectively of the girl and chair taken together and omega and omega dash respectively be the initial and final angular velocity of the girl along with chair. Then by conservation of momentum I can write i into omega will be equal to i dash into omega dash which means initial angular momentum is equal to final angular momentum. This gives us equation number 1. As i is equal to 2.34 kg meter square and omega is equal to 0.8 revolutions per second, i dash here is 0.363 kg meter square on substituting the values above in equation number 1, we get omega dash is equal to i into omega upon i dash. Therefore, omega dash becomes 2.34 into 0.8 divided by 0.363, which on calculating we get 5.16 revolutions per second. Part B, rotational kinetic energy, which can be given as half into i into omega square. i is the moment of inertia and omega is the angular speed of the given rotating object. The initial value is found by substituting the known values and the converting the angular velocity to radians per second as radian per second is the SI unit of angular velocity. Omega becomes 0.8 into 2 pi which becomes 1.6 pi radians per second. Therefore, initial kinetic energy can be written as half i omega square is equal to 2.34 into 0.8 into 2 pi whole square divided by 2 which becomes on solving 29.6 joules. Similarly, we can find the final rotational kinetic energy as half i dash into omega dash square. The value of omega dash as determined from part A can be written in terms of radians per second as omega dash is equal to 5.16 into 2 pi radians per second. Substituting this value in the expression final kinetic energy it will be equal to half i dash omega dash square as 0.363 into square of product 5.16 into 2 pi divided by 2 which on calculating comes out to be 191 joules. Both the final angular velocity and final kinetic energy are much greater than the initial values. Can one think of a reason behind the increase in kinetic energy of the girl? In fact, somebody must be doing a work. Only then the kinetic energy of a given system can increase. And we can see here the potential energy of the system was not changing. In fact, increase in rotational kinetic energy comes from the work done by the girl in pulling in her arms. In short, in this module, we have learned that first, the angular momentum of a system of n particles about the origin can be written as net angular momentum L will be equal to summation i goes from 1 to n cross product of r i and p i, where r i is the position vector of ith particle and p i is the linear momentum of the ith particle. Second, for a rigid body, the angular momentum can be also written as 
L net or net angular momentum is equal to moment of inertia into angular velocity. Third, if the external torque acting on a given body or a system is zero, then the component of angular momentum about the fixed axis will be L equal to I omega about that axis remains constant or conserved. Thank you.